What we're looking at today is a D flip-flop. If you're not familiar with D flip-flops, you might want to go look at a data sheet for a D flip-flop or uh, at uh, some other information. But I'm assuming that you understand that the way a D flip-flop works is when the clock transitions, either in the falling in some cases for some or the rising edge, what what is on the input in this case the lower trace gets latched on the output which is what the upper trace is but as you can see here that's not what's happening instead what is happening is the uh, output instead of it should be the way this is set up it should always latch high but because of the timing relationship between these two signals sometimes it latches high and sometimes it latches low. So let's take a look at uh, what that means on a, an oscilloscope and how you look for this kind of a problem. So here is an illustration from chapter 5 of the MSO 5000 manual about setup and hold triggers. The purpose of a setup and hold trigger, and by the way it's a setup or hold or both trigger. We'll look at that a little later when we look at the how we uh, actually configure this on the oscilloscope. You assume that you have a data source that goes to its uh, desired value sometime before the clock edge and then remains at the desired value for some time after the clock edge. The time before the clock edge is called the setup time the time after the clock edge is called the hold time. And uh, individual flip-flops, depending on their technology and their processing and so on, will tell you what the required setup time is and what the required hold time is. The manufacturer uh, guarantees that a one of their good flip-flops, if you make sure the data is stable, uh, a time equal or more than the setup time that they specify before the clock that it will always latch correctly. They further uh, guarantee that if you keep that signal stable for the hold time after the clock edge that it will remain in the correct state after the clock occurs. If you violate either the setup time or the hold time then all bets are off. Basically you're operating outside the uh, specification of, by the manufacturer. So why would you not just always allow plenty of time before and plenty of time after and, and you won't ever have this problem? Well the problem is that if you are driving a system as fast as it can go looking for the maximum performance you don't want to wait a long time. You want to get as close to the setup time as you can. Similarly, you don't want to wait a long time after the clock before you change the data again. You want to maximize performance. But as you maximize performance, you get closer and closer to these uh, critical values. And when you exceed the critical values, you start getting unstable operation. So let's look at now how you might set up an MSO 5000 for this kind of a trigger in this particular case and in the example that we've been using. Now some of you also might be uh, noticing that this input signal the, the data in seems to have a much higher fall time than the clock. Now if we're using the same technology for both, in other words for suppose for example this is high-speed CMOS, then the fall time for the clock driver should be about the same as the fall time for the data driver. But for some reason in this case there isn't. I suspect, and this is a Tektronix demo board that I'm using for this, and I suspect that they did this deliberately so that you would see that when you have a long fall time relative to the clock transition time, 
that you can get into trouble, especially if you have a clock, like this one is, that jitters. Now, all we mean by clock jitter is the time between, say, the first clock transition and the next clock transition is not the same for each cycle. Let's suppose that the transition is 100 nanoseconds, but sometimes it's 98 nanoseconds and sometimes it's 101 nanoseconds or anything in between. That means we have 3 nanoseconds of clock jitter. It might be much worse than that, it might be much better. But the idea is that when the clock and the data are not locked together so that you're guaranteed that the data stays in its stable state throughout the entire clock transition, then what you have is a potential metastable condition. And as we see here, that means that instead of the output remaining at a 1, which it should, Every time the clock transitions, the, the output should be latched to a 1. But because of the clock jitter, and in part because of the slow fall time of the data input, sometimes it latches at a 1 and sometimes at a 0. Notice that when the clock is all the way to the left, it latches correctly. In other words, it latches to a 1. But as the clock moves to the right, in other words, the jitter increases, it begins to overlap this slow fall of the data. And instead of latching the 1, it sometimes latches a 0. So how do we set this up on an oscilloscope like the MSO5000? Well, the first thing we do is we bring up the trigger menu. Now, we have connected the channel 2 to the clock signal, you notice over here, it's labeled uh, clock. And above that, the, uh, the Q output is labeled out, and the D input is labeled in. So we go to type under the trigger menu, and we come down to set up and hold, and we click on that. Then we have to set up the clock, we have to tell the oscilloscope which channel to use for the clock signal. And of course we have said that's channel 2. We then have to tell the oscilloscope which edge is the clock, does the clock trigger on. It can be rising, notice that the oscilloscope stops triggering in that case because this is a falling edge clock. So we click on falling and then we have to set up the data channel. Well the data channel is channel 3 and then we set up the data type and the data type is high. How did we decide that? Well because we are interested in the case when the data was a 1 at the time the clock changed. Then we come down to the when box and notice that we have three choices. Set up, hold, or set up or hold. In other words, both. We're set up for a hold violation. We're looking for a hold violation. Now, you might look for a setup violation under another set of circumstances. Now that we have set up, it's a hold violation we have to look for. We then click more, and it then allows us to say how much, uh, what is the allowable uh, hold time. So we click on that, and uh, this comes up, and we're using 10 nanoseconds. But suppose we want to use the minimum that the scope will, will handle. We'll click on min. Notice that it goes to 8 nanoseconds, and we click OK. In this case, that doesn't make any difference. But suppose that we had said 2 microseconds. Since we're allowing, since we're saying that the uh, the data that the the uh, 
higher value of hold time just makes it more likely that a hold violation will occur. In this particular case, since we're looking at the hold violations, 10 nanoseconds is good enough. Now, if we set this to zero, which this scope is incapable of doing, but if we set it to zero, then this would never trigger because there's never a time when the clock occurs significantly before the data transition. It always occurs at or after. And in this case, we're saying any time that the data changes more than 10 nanoseconds after the clock trigger. Well, in this case, it's doing that on virtually every uh, cycle. Now, there might be a lot of uh, cycles of the system that are not being triggered, but every time that the clock and data come within 10 nanoseconds on hold time, the scope triggers. And that's what we're looking at here. Notice also that we are using a normal trigger up here in the upper right hand corner, right up here. We're using a normal trigger, not an auto trigger. So that is how we set up a hold time trigger circuit or, a, or the MSO5000 to detect a hold time violation in your circuit. I hope this video has helped. I'm going to try to keep it a little shorter than the ones we've been doing recently uh, and so I can deal with separate subjects and that way when somebody later wants to come back to one of these they won't have to watch uh, something they're not interested in in order to get to the part they are. So once again hope you've enjoyed and learned something from this or if you haven't learned something new maybe it's just reviewed it for you but we will be doing some more of these and in the meantime, stay tuned, stay safe, and have a nice day.